Happy 4-H week from all of us here at RFD-TV and Sirius XM's Channel 147, that's Rural Radio, and uh, all of us here at the uh, Market Day Report. Well, the grains are off to a little bit of a weaker start here so far this morning, and that was despite some of these export sales numbers on the overnight. We had some overnight exports of corn and for soybeans, and they were in the range of five, just a little over 597,000 tons went to Mexico. That was corn. And then soybeans, 100 132,000 went to China. Those numbers, how did they factor into the grain trade? Well, let's take a real quick look at the uh, futures right here. It's corn on the lower side by three cents on the December, down three, 352 and a quarter. March corn down two and a half at 365 and a quarter. Soybean market also a uh, negative category here. November down nine and three quarters, 958 and a half. No lift from the wheat market today in Chicago. It's December wheat down seven at 441 and a quarter. December Kansas City wheat is down eight at 434 and three quarters. And Minneapolis wheat is down 17 cents at 606 and three quarters. And part of that is just a little bit of leftover from last week's report on Friday. Um, the uh, December cotton contract right now is down 54 at 67.91. Let's visit with Oliver Slope here to get analysis. And Oliver, thank you very much. Oliver's right there at the edge of the trading floor at the CME Group. Um, what do you think of this to today's trade? Uh, is this just a lot of harvest activity uh, that's putting pressure on this market? Is it left over from last Friday, or is it a combination of several things? Well, I, I think it's a combination of several things. We got some friendly numbers for corn and beans in that USDA report, but it really just wasn't. A enough to get any more momentum and now the attention turns back to harvest and then that October 12th uh, supply and demand report but uh, I mean basically the corn market's been a stick in the mud for a while and we've been trading in a little bit of a range the bulls really want to see us continue to close above 348 and a quarter that was the closing low of September if we do break below uh, that on a closing basis there could be additional long liquidation now on the flip side uh, the resistance that we're looking at 362 to 364 this is the September 6th highs as well as the 50-day moving average. If we can get some sort of bullish catalyst to get us out above there, we could see the funds cover. And we saw Friday's commitment of traders. The funds do have a pretty uh, good-sized net short position of about 133,000 contracts. So a lot of attention going to be on harvest uh, over the next month, month and a half. Oliver, if we would continue to see liquidation, then how much further do you think we could get underneath that 340 mark on corn? 348 is the line in the sand for December. Close below that really opens the door to some accelerated selling pressure. And I think the next line below that is 335. So you're looking at about 13 cents lower if we close below those September lows. And that could put a drag on the rest of the grain market. Let's talk about soybeans because uh, we're, we're kind of getting close to the bottom end of the range here as well. Yeah, for Friday was really disappointing. I mean, we, we started out pretty hot after that report. We got up right near 977. This was a, a big level for a lot of technical traders out there. This represents the 200-day moving average, but it also represents the middle of the range from the June lows to the July highs. And we failed to get out above that, and we saw some selling late day come in. Uh, although we do did finish positive, it wasn't the, the best close. So now we're retreating back. I think 953 offers a good level of support. This is trend line support from the middle of the August lows. If we're able to hold that on a closing basis, I think we continue to make the trend of higher highs and higher lows. Obviously, as with corn, a lot of attention going to be on harvest, but there is a little bit of a silver lining. Uh, on the reverse of corn, the funds actually have a net long position in soybeans, about 35,000. They added another 13,000 last week. So if we're able to get some sort of bullish uh, numbers from harvest, that could uh, entice funds to step in in a little bit bigger way to the buy side. Oliver Slope here with us with Blue Line uh, Futures and Oliver stick around when we come back we'll talk about the livestock trade that's coming up next here on the Market Day Report. From Blue Line Futures, Oliver Slope is our guest to talk about the livestock trade. Oliver, uh, interesting uh, scenario kind of setting up for this week. Those feeder futures have just been all over the place, and it's got a lot of uh, folks just kind of sitting back watching, wondering, where do we go from here? 
Yeah, it's, uh, well, relatively speaking, it's a little bit quieter than last week. If you recall, we had that gap lower last week that led to some, uh, uh, some, some pretty decent pressure earlier in the week. Uh, but we're, we're looking to go fill the gap. We're looking at the November contract. This is where the majority of the volume is going to be. I know October is still on the board, and there's some traders looking at that. But November is going to give you about twice as much volume. Um, so we're looking at the gap that comes in at about 156.07 and a half. If we're able to close above that, I think we could see some continuation higher presses towards that 158 level. Now on the flip side, if we do close that gap, which I think we will, and they close below, I think we could go retest uh, the bottom end of the range last week, 151, 37 and a half. So there's a couple different scenarios that we're looking at, but basically just playing the range of last week's price action. Well, let's look at those numbers here uh, that you just talked a little bit about. We'll start with the live cattle futures, uh, which are now on the higher side, October up 25, 109.35. But look at the December fats, 115.25 and that just went unchanged. We've still got quite a, uh, quite a range here between the October and the December fats. Yeah, I, I think December still has uh, some more room to the upside. That's again, as with feeders, we're, we're looking out a little bit further. December is going to be where you're going to see a lot more volume, and so that's what we're looking at for the fat cattle. I think we could really potentially get back up towards that 120 level, and that's going to be the July highs. I think we might start to peter out up there and then fail back in and settle into a little bit of a range, which we've really been uh, in between if you bring out the chart a little bit. Uh, the commitment of traders, the funds remain long. They added another 6,000 contracts last week. So they're really not in any rush to, to hit the exits as far as their long position goes. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some more upward momentum in the near future. So is this what feedlot managers are hanging their hat on this week and, and pointing to for uh, support, at least maybe steady prices in this market? Yeah, I think that's what we're looking for. Obviously, we're going to be watching the cash cattle trade uh, pretty closely this week. That's going to be a big factor, as it is every week. But as it stands right now, uh, things look uh, pretty bright-eyed here. All right, let's look at uh, feeder cattle futures and then hog futures, because I want to get to the hogs and get your thoughts here uh, real quick. Uh, October feeder cattle up 69 at 152.92. November's up 25 at 154.25. Real quickly, the hog trade, uh, the uh, nearby uh, hog market uh, for the futures, October's up $1.90. At 57.35, December up a dollar 90. Oliver, can this market recover too quickly and have too much air underneath us? You know, we, we've been in, in a very wide range. We saw some aggressive covering on Friday session that's carried over to momentum here in the early morning trade. I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue. 61.30 to 61.70 for that December contract is going to be the big line in the sand. That's a 100 and 200 day moving average. If we're able to get out above that, I wouldn't be surprised to see us extend towards that 65 level, which I believe is the August uh, and contract highs up there. All right, Oliver Slope here with us uh, from Chicago, right there at the edge of the trading floor at the CME Group with Blue Line Futures. Oliver, thank you very much. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Have a great day.